Thanks for tuning in guys, I'm Colin Childs. This is my home studio and today I'm gonna to show you five things you didn't know you could do inside of PreSonus Studio One. Okay guys, so we're gonna hop right in and I'm gonna show you as quickly as I can so you guys can get right back to mixing and try these things out for yourself. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the console options. So I'm gonna pull up a random track. Here we have our console. Um, and one of the things you guys can do is actually take it out. So you can go like this then you have your console right here in a window that you can move around, spread it, everything. And the next thing that you can do here is you can shrink it like this, or if you hit this expand, you can bring it up like here. So you have all of your plugins. You can see every plugin on every single track. Very cool thing to do, spread it out, shrink it, and then you can close your plugin window or you can open it back up. And then these guys here, the actual size of the columns, of each track. You can shrink that as well, just like that. And then same thing here. And then these will just be your volume meters here and your compression levels. So very cool things um, that you can do here with the console uh, page, the, uh, the console window, I guess you could say. A lot of people don't know that you can do that. So very simple thing. Maybe you did know that you could do that. Maybe you didn't. So that's something to try out and uh, put it back, all you do is hit that arrow again. Take it out, arrow, put it back, arrow. Very cool. And then you could even cover the whole page um, with this here. Let me get rid of that. So the next thing we're gonna talk about um, that a lot of people know, you can do this on Pro Tools, you might be able to do this on a couple other DAWs. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out how to do this on Studio One, I really uh, wanted to do this, and that is Data Zoom. So if you have a track that has very small, say for instance this one, very small waveforms, you would go right down to this corner here, you see these two little boxes, there's a little box and there's a big box. Go to the little box here, and that's your data zoom. So it's in no way, shape, or form changing the gain levels of your tracks, it's only changing the view of the data. So this is data zoom. So if you had something you put it in and you can't see these waveforms on here. Well, you wouldn't want to go to it and just raise the gain of the clip right here. You would leave that the same because that's going to screw everything up with your gain staging and everything like that. So what you would do is you would just go to data zoom, raise it up. Now you can see where the waveforms come in. Now you know what you're, what you're working with and where sound is going to be heard basically. Very quick and easy thing to do and that should help you guys out as well. Moving on, very cool thing PreSonus put in the Studio One here, and that is your um, keyboard shortcutting. So I would go to Preferences here, I would go to General, and then I would hit Keyboard Shortcuts, and obviously you have everything that it comes with here. Um, a lot of you guys probably know your keyboard shortcuts and stuff. I use them very sparingly here and there just to move my different tools on the top every once in a while. But down here you have keyboard mapping scheme. So right now it's set to Studio One, obviously. This is the DAW I use the most and, and what I'm used to. So I always have it on, set on Studio One. But if you are coming from Logic, Pro Tools, I'm not sure if they have an Ableton one or not, but we'll check. We'll pull down this uh, drop menu here. So you have Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, and Sonar. I don't see an Ableton one, but here you can actually import one. So I believe that you may be able to take one from Ableton, I'm not sure, um, unless that's PC only. Um, but you would hit import and then you could bring one in if you wanted to and then all of your tools and your, your keyboard shortcuts would be set up to that previous DAW that you were using such as Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, and etc. It's a very cool thing that PreSonus has put in there for Studio One users um, if they're coming from a different DAW. But like I said right now, I just have mine set on Studio One. So that brings me over to what I'm gonna talk about for number four, that is creating templates. So um, I'm sure a lot of you guys understand what templates are, a lot of Pro Tools users use templates. Basically all it is is a way for you to set up each track for each instrument and have a preset of plugins that are already on those tracks. So if you have, if you're doing a drum recording for the day or somebody's sending you drum tracks, you already have everything set up overhead, left and right, your room mics, 
um, top snare, bottom snare, kick, toms, whatever, even if you had a different genre, say rap, you have main vocal tracks, you have your backup vocal tracks, everything, and it's all set up uh, with plugins, and you can just load in that template, it's all right there, ready to go, and then you bring in your stems and put it right on top of it, so you're basically already ready to go. You don't have to take all that time to put in all those plugins. So I'm gonna give you guys an example. We'll throw in a few uh, tracks here, load some plugins on it, and save it as a preset. I'm just gonna throw some random stuff on there for now. and then you guys can even throw stuff on the master track so if I want to put one I use a lot is um, the Abbey Road mastering chain so I'll just throw that on there as an example and then you could even color code them okay cool and then all I'm gonna do now is go to file save as template and I'll just name it example you could even throw a picture in there you could put a description you hit okay so then you're gonna pull up a new song all you have to do is go to user there it is example that is my example template that I just created it's gonna pull up a brand new thing here boom all these tracks are already in here of course you can name them it's got my mastering thing there and then the plugins that I added very cool thing you can do and it's gonna save you guys so much time creating templates. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is also something that you can do in Pro Tools and a lot of other DAWs that a lot of people just haven't figured out how to do and it's so simple, it's unreal. So basically all I'm talking about is having multiple plugins on your desktop at the same time or inside of your DAW at the same time. So here's a plugin here, all you have to do is hit this tack button right there at the top right corner and that's gonna keep that plugin up. Now if I wanna to go to a different track and bring this plugin up, I have it there. All I need to do to bring up another plugin, hit the tack button once again. Now I have both tacked up. Go to a different track here, if I can see it, and then I'm gonna pull up another plugin. Very simple. So if you're doing side chaining and you have a compressor open and you have another track with some other uh, plugins on it you can have them both up at the same time very cool thing to do and I'm glad I figured that out and I hope that helps you guys if any of these other things helped you guys and you didn't know about them before I encourage you to try to use them in your mixing now and give a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and comment if you guys have any other questions or if this helped you